O oh, come all ye grateful, fight fans to UFC 189, O oh, come ye even though we know our highly anticipated main event got screwed up. Damn you injury bug, we'll get you the next time. Oh come watch Mendez vs McGregor. Oh come watch Mendez vs McGregor. Oh come watch Mendez vs McGregor. Oh by the way, we have another title fight that nobody's talking about. Okay, so my scene leaves a little bit to be desired this time around. Remember the last time I did a uh, video for Counter Move Fantasy MMA at countermove.com. Well, unofficially did a video for them, but it was my picks. That was for UFC 187, and let's be honest, not many people actually thought Travis Brown was going to get knocked out by Andre Arlovsky. So, not very good night for me that night. But, I'm hoping to turn things around tonight. Or actually, not necessarily tonight, but Saturday night, UFC 189. No, it's not Aldo versus McGregor, but we do get Chad Mendez as the stand-in for Conor McGregor. Excuse me, for Jose Aldo. So, I'll take it. I'm liking this. We also have a welterweight title fight between Robbie Lawler and Rory McDonald. Nobody's talking about it for obvious reasons, but I will talk about it right here. I'll give you my predictions for UFC 189. And I will also give you my picks for who you should put on your counter move team at counter move fantasy and MMA at countermove.com. Now you're probably wondering, Gus, what the hell is counter move fantasy MMA at countermove.com? If you've ever heard of some of these fantasy football leagues that are pay in leagues, mostly pay in leagues, where if you have the highest scoring team, you get money. This is exactly like that. Perfectly legal. And this being a highly anticipated card, some of these games this time around have big prizes. We're talking $1,000 top prizes in some of these. And there's games for everyone, anyone from big spenders to people who really want to play cheap, which kind of is like what I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my picks. There's other people who give you picks, but come on. i got to make an effort here, folks. Can't let people like Tommy Toehold and the guys from some of those other websites and video groups have all the fun. Come on. I'm going to give you picks. I'm going to go over every fight, tell you what I think, and whether you should maybe think about putting somebody from that fight on your team or not. Now you're probably wondering, how do I go about this? First off, you go to countermove.com. Then select a game. There's free games, there's cheap games, there's the games that are like a $100 entry fee, if you're really up for that. All sorts of games. Once you select a game, you go to the selection screen. Every fight is listed and you'll have an imaginary salary cap of $25,000. You will have to pick five fighters, and you have to stay within your salary cap. Now, to win, you score points. Points are scored based on significant strikes landed, takedowns, submission attempts, dominant positions. If it goes to decision, it also includes rounds one. But what we really want what we really want are finishes. We want finishes because you get bonuses. Round one finishes, 100 points. Round two finishes, 75 points. Rounds three, four, or five, 50 points. So the earlier the finish, the better. The team with the most points gets the most money. And some of these games, the top, I know one of the games like the top 111 or so pay out. If you're the 111th best picker, you're going to get money. It's that simple. I've done it. I've actually won on several of these games. So, I kind of know what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to help you pick. Well, actually, I'll give you some suggestions. You'll have to figure out on your own whether you like the picks or not. But, 
I'm gonna give you my suggestions. And then maybe you can figure out what you want for your team. Remember, we want finishes, we want them fast. So, I'm gonna help you by going over every single one of these fights. Bear with me, this card could be better. This is an ugly card to pick for this time around. There's some really close fights and not that many cheap picks. But with some good strategizing and some careful thought, you might come up with something pretty damn good. So here we go. And sometimes, by the way, you have to risk it all, risk a pick to win big. Sometimes the risk pays up, sometimes it doesn't. You never know. Got a little speck on my screen. Do, do, do. There we go. Sorry, that was going to drive me nuts. All right, let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> First off, we have Neil Siri versus Louis Smolka. Neil Siri is 15 and 10 with a 73% finish rate. Three first round finishes, but he has had no finishes in the UFC thus far. He has five submission losses, three of them coming in the first round. He's also in his mid 30s. Louis Smolka is 8 and 1. He has an 88% finish rate, two first round finishes. He's only 23 years old, but he does not have the same amount of experience as quality fighters. Both of them are equally priced at 4800 but I really don't see any of these guys getting the finish here. If I had to pick, I probably would say Smolka. He's got the submission ability, and we know that there's that tendency for Siri to get submitted, but this is really a tricky fight to pick. If I'm picking, I'll say Smolka, but I'm not confident enough. I'm going to skip this fight. Next up, we have Cody Fister versus Justena Cedeno. God, I hope I, picked, I said that name right. Fister is 11-4. He has a 63% finish rate, so he's about two-thirds. Seven first-round finishes, but he has three sub-losses, including his UFC de C debut. He has two first-round losses. So Daniel is 10-4. He has a 70% finish rate, all by knockout. Sixth in the first round. Trains with the Black Zillion team, so that's pretty good. So Daniel at 5,500. He's probably a good pick because of his knockout ability, but, you know, at 5,500, I think I find better value elsewhere. And I know Cody Fister is at, at 4,100. If, you if you're really desperate to put a couple really high rollers, you could probably put in Fister as a throwaway pick. Kind of like the how, kind of like what Brian Barbarena was for a lot of UFC 186 teams, including mine. I'm not liking this fight at all. So Daniel probably wins, but at 5,500, he's just he's just way too expensive here. Skip this fight. Next, we have Cody Garbrandt versus Enrique Barones, aka Henry Barones. Garbrandt is six and zero. All of his wins are by knockout. Four from the first round, and he also knocked out Marcus Brimage in his last fight. Barones is 16, four and one. He has a 88% finish rate, 10 in the first round, but he has not fought a high level of competition. Garbrandt, like I mentioned, knocked out Marcus Brimage in his last fight. Garbrandt, I like Garbrandt in this fight. He, I think he gets the win. I think he gets the finish. But at 5,500, he's a little pricey. If you can free up enough room, and you're not really feeling confident about a couple of the, you know, the main card picks, probably go with Garbrandt. But and I wouldn't mind skipping him. I would also skip Baronis for sure. Next, we have Alex Garcia versus Mike Swick. Uh, Garcia is 12 and 2. He has an 84% finish rate, nine finishes in the first round. Trains with the TriStar team, which, by the way, is where George St. Pierre trains and where one half of our co main event trains. That's pretty good. Mike Swick is 15 and 5. He has an 83, or excuse me, a 73% finish rate, eight in the first round. He has fought everyone there is to fight in this company, in the UFC, and all around the world. But he has also not fought in two and a half years, mostly because he's been working on making that one, I believe, is American Kickboxing Academy gym in Thailand. The fact that he has not fought in two and a half years, I think, is not good for his chances. I like Alex Garcia at 4,800. He's a very good pick. I'm putting Alex Garcia on my team. I think he wins. I think he wins 
big. I think he wins early. That's what we want for our teams. Next, we have Katal Pendred versus John Howard. Pendred is 17, 2, and 1. He only has 41% finishes. Only two of them in the first round. He goes to decisions way too much for my taste, and he's ext been extremely underwhelming thus far in his UFC tenure. I mean, he had that comeback win against Mike Hill it, at uh, the last event the UFC had in Ireland, which was back in 2014. But that was also a come from behind win. So, Mike Hill, I'm probably not know if it's right, the right name. Sorry. Uh, so, that's not good. John Howard is 22 and 11. He has a 68% finish rate, 7 in the first round, but he has a very mediocre record against the better fighters in the division, and it was knocked out in the first round in his last fight. This is what I mean when I say there's like a lot of ugly picks on this card. If I'm picking, I'm probably saying Pendred. You could take a chance on Howard at 4,300 if you really need the room, but this is a fight I would avoid like the plague because Pendred could make this as boring as hell. Next, we have a fun one. Matt Brown versus t the Dirty Bird Tim Means. The immortal Matt Brown is 19 and 13. He has an 89% finish rate, 7 in the first round. He has fought the highest level of competition. I mean, he's fought everybody and he's fought the very best, but he's also been submitted nine times. Tim Means, 24, 6, and 1. He has an 84% finish rate, 14 of those in the first round. The only problem is he hasn't fought quite he hasn't fought quite the same level of fighters as Brown. And he's not a submission fighter, and the best way to beat Brown is by submission. It's a tricky fight. I would not sleep on Tim Means at 4200. If you really want to go with an underdog pick, Tim Means is the one you want. But even at 5400, I like Matt Brown. I think he's a solid pick. I think he will finish Tim Means. If he doesn't finish him, he's going to batter him to no end. Should rack up quite a few points. I'm going to put Matt Brown on my team. I think he's worth the $5,400 price tag. Next, we move to the main card. Brad Pickett versus Thomas Almeida. Pickett, 40, or excuse me, Pickett 24 and 10. He has a 71% finish rate. Six in the first round, but he has had mixed success against top-level fighters. Although, way back in the WEC days, he did defeat the one, the only, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. But that was a long time ago in Johnson's career. I think he's gotten better since then. Pickett, in my opinion, has actually regressed. Almeida is 18-0. He has a unbelievable 95% finish rate. 15 in the first round, including his last fight. The only problem is he has not fought anywhere near the same level of fighters as Pickett. That being said, the fact that Pickett is seriously going backwards in his career, he's going back up to bantamweight, which probably is the best move for him, but against someone like Almeida, who is proving to be a nightmare at the bantamweight level, I think Almeida is a future player at 135. I think he is the man to beat here. I think you want him on your team, even at 5,200. I think he finishes Pickett, finishes him fast. Put Thomas Almeida on your team. I think he's a lock. Next, we have a really tricky one. Gunnar Nelson versus Brandon Thatch. Nelson is 13-1-1. One, and one. He has a 91% finish rate, or excuse me, 92% finish rate, 10 in the first round. However, in his last fight, he was beaten in the split decision upset by Rick Story. However, Nelson also trains at SBG, which is where Conor McGregor trains as well. Brandon Thatch is 11-2. He has finished all of his wins, and all of those wins have been in the first round. Although in his last fight, he was submitted by Benson Henderson, though that took to the fourth round. 
the fact that he has a submission loss on his record and the fact that 69% of Nelson's wins are by submission, if you're going to pick, I would pick Gunnar Nelson. But... He had, I mean, at 5,300, both of these guys are 5,300. I think it is a very close fight. I think the pricing is correct on this, but I don't think the pricing is right to put Nelson on your team. I think it's too close to call. It wouldn't surprise me if Thatch pulls off the win. I will, I will say, if I'm picking, I'm taking Nelson, but I'm not confident. Next, we have Dennis Bermudez versus Jeremy Stevens. Bermudez is 14 and 4. He has a 50% finish rate, 4 in the first round, but all four of his losses have been by submission in the first round. Jeremy Stevens is 23 and 11. He has a 78% finish rate, 12 in the first round. Has fought a wide variety of fighters, but he's dropped his last few by decision and. Half of the wins that Bermudez has are by decision. Stevens is not known as a submission fighter, but a good shot to the jaw of Bermudez will take will knock him down, and I think it would knock him down enough for Stevens to go for a submission. That's pretty much, if I remember right, that's how Ricardo Lamas beat Stevens at UFC one. Is he beat Bermudez at UFC one eighty? At fifth, I mean the level. Uh, the amount of decisions that Bermudez has, you know, he has half of his wins by decision. At 5,300, I would rather he have more finishes if I'm going to pick him. But I'm going to be honest. At 4,300, and knowing the fact that a good shot could put Bermudez down long enough for Stevens to go for a submission, even though Stevens is not a submission fighter, at 4,300, I like Jeremy Stevens. I think he pulls off the upset. I think he picks up this one. And also, the at 4300 that's a low enough price that if I put him on my team, I can get some of these higher price fighters. So, I'm putting Jeremy Stevens on my team. I think the little heathen will pull off a shocker here. So, I think he's somebody you probably want to consider if you want to get some of these higher up fighters. Next, we have our welterweight championship co-main event. The champ, Robbie Lawler. The contender, Rory McDonald. The champ is five. Or excuse me, the champ is 25 and 10 with one no contest. He has an 80% finish rate, 12 of those in the first round. He has fought forever. I mean, he's fought actually since before UFC 40, which was a lot when a lot of people believe that UFC started to turn things in their favor. In 2002, Waller actually fought in that card. Nice little fun fact, and it was a finish. He knocked the guy out, if I believe, right in the first round. I don't remember who he fought. Might have been Tiki. I don't remember. Anyway, Waller's fought forever. He's beaten everybody. Since he's come back to the UFC in 2013, he's gotten better and better and better. That's a, a surprise. He has gotten better. Most fighters, when they age, and as their career progresses, they don't get better, they tend to regress. Lawler's gotten better. That's the shock in and of itself. Rory McDonald is 18 and 2. He has a 72% finish rate, seven of those wins in the first round. Since his loss in split decision to Robbie Lawler at UFC 167, he's actually gotten better. He's getting back to the Rory McDonald who people used to see as actually being a very good fighter, as being someone who actually I thought was more of a had a killer instinct kind of thing to him. He did in fact finish his last fight. And he also trains at TriStar with George St. Pierre. Roy McDonald I think is a very promising fighter. I you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I think we will have a new welterweight champion. As much as I love Lawler, as much as I'm amazed by the fact he just has gotten better since coming back, I think McDonald has improved enough that I think he pulls it off. I think he wins this fight. But, he is at 5,600. And you cannot sleep on Robbie Lawler. This is a fight I will avoid. If I have to pick, I will say Rory McDonald pulls off the win. I think 
And a lot of people say McDonald is the favorite. I think Lawler's the favorite and more of a favorite in this fight than McDonald. If I'm pick, if I say who the favorite is, I think it's Lawler. But I would pick McDonald. But he's at fifty six hundred dollars. That's way too expensive. I'm gonna skip this fight. It's just too close. And then finally, the main event: interim featherweight championship. The first time if I can if I remember correctly, an interim belt has taken precedence over an undisputed belt. As far as card order. In the UFC, Chad Mendez against the one, the only, the notorious Conor McGregor. Mendez is 17 2. He has a 53% finish rate, so slightly more than half. Seven of those have been in the first round. He has fought the elite, the most elite fighters. His two losses, both to Jose Aldo, the current undisputed champ. He's an elite wrestler, which is someone that Conor McGregor has not had to face yet in the UFC. That's been the biggest criticism about Conor's rise. He has not had to fight an elite level wrestler. However, Mendez is also taking this fight on very short notice. McGregor, 17-2 as well. He has an outstanding 94% finish rate. 88% by knockout. 12 finishes in the first round. The big point of emphasis, aside from the fact he has not fought elite wrestlers yet, is that he has also been subbed twice in his career. The problem is that was extremely early. And one has to believe that he has improved on this since then. And he's also an elite striker. Yes, he has not fought elite wrestlers yet, but he is still an elite striker. This fight is very close. As much as Mendez says he's going to try to take Conor down, the problem is Conor McGregor, even though he's not fought elite wrestlers yet, I think people keep looking at those two submission losses. Those are still very early in his career. Well, you have to believe he's improved since then. So, if so Mendez's elite wrestling may still not be enough to beat Conor McGregor. And as much as Chad says that he's going to try to bring Conor to the ground, I don't see it happening. As much as he says he's going to try to bring him to the ground some minimum, he only has a 12% submission rate, Mendez does. I don't see him actually being very successful in that regard. And so I don't see him actually trying to put this fight on the ground. I think he tries to keep it standing. If he does, he plays into Connor's hand, and he will get knocked out. I can assure you this right now. If he tries to stand with Conor McGregor, he will get knocked out. I think I. this is why I, I will pick Conor McGregor to win this fight. I think that Chad is going to try to... I think he will try to bring him to the ground at some point. But he's going to try to stay standing for most of this fight and I think he will pay dearly for it. At 5200, considering how close this is, you know what? You could it's a coin toss. You could pick Mendes at 5400, you could pick McGregor at 5200. I'm picking McGregor. I think he finishes this fight. I think he finishes it big. I think Mendes may make a huge mistake here. And I think Connor will capitalize. Or, you know, he could, Mendes could try to bring him to the ground, and Connor could stuff him. Or, you know, who knows? He could even go for the Travis Brown defense. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch Travis Brown's fight with Josh Barnett at UFC 168, and you'll know what I mean. It's a close fight to call. If you want to skip this, go right ahead. I don't blame you. But I'm going to put McGregor on my team at 5200. I think that's a risk I'm willing to take. So, once you've gone over the fights, you've looked it over, pick a team and hit the play now button. You can pick whoever you want. You really can. I'm going to take Conor McGregor. It's a tough pick, but I think he wins this. Thomas Almeida, Matt Brown, Alex Garcia, who is my lock, as is Matt Brown, and I'm picking Jeremy Stevens for the upset. And at 4,300, he allows me to pick guys like McGregor, Almeida, and Brown. So I like that pick. You know, even if he doesn't do well, you know, if it goes to a decision, he's still cheap enough 
that I could put McGregor, Brown, and Almeida on my team. You know, I like that pick. So, again, you know, you can pick whoever you want. And maybe you take my advice and then you wake up tomorrow and be like, oh my god, maybe I should have put Conor McGregor on my team. I think Chad, may submit, Chad Mendes may still submit him after all. Maybe I want somebody else. Maybe I want Robbie Lawler. Go ahead, switch Lawler in. Take McGregor out, put in Robbie Lawler. From the, from now till the start of fight night, you can do that. You can change your team as much as you want. And again, you score the most points, you win money. You can win a lot of money, maybe you can win just 10 bucks. You know how many times I've only won 10 bucks? Quite a few times. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, it's still a win. And you know what? It could also be gas money or whatever. You never know. Counter move fantasy MMA at countermove.com. I've done it. I've won I've won a few bucks. I've won big. You know that time in Brazil earlier this year where they had all those upsets? I won over two hundred some dollars on that single night. If I can do it, you can do it. It's simple. You just have to have the right picks, use some thought, hope for the best. And you could win big. Car move fantasy MMA at carmove.com. What are you waiting for? I've done it a lot of times, and it's awesome. Even though some of the times I actually end up losing, hey, it's awesome. Try it, you'll love it, and you'll keep doing it. I mean, not to unhealthy addiction levels, but you'll keep doing it. So, Hopefully I can make some picks in a couple weeks as well for the big UFC on Fox event. I'm totally stoked for that. Dillashaw versus Brow too. I'm loving this. Uh, I won't be doing a video, by the way, for the Ultimate Fighter finale. I mean, it looks like a pretty decent card, but I'm not going to suddenly just ugh, try to do another video. So I'll probably do another video in a couple weeks for the UFC on Fox card. And then the following week or whatever for UFC 190. So, big things happening this week. You know, I know you're going to watch, trust me, you're going to watch Mendes vs. McGregor. You're going to watch UFC 189. It's going to be that good. And hopefully, you play fantasy MMA at countroof.com and you win big. So, until then, I'm Gus Richland, and here's hoping your dreams operable.